All right. Yeah, what's inside? Hello everybody, I'm Richard Holder, and as always, welcome to the channel. Before we get going on our discussion on the Performance Design XS Intake Manifold, that's right, there are two of them, please make sure, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff so you get notified when I do all this testing. But today we're talking about not just one, but two Performance Design XS Intake Manifolds. That's right, they make two of them. They make a 105 millimeter version and a 112 millimeter version, and I tested both of them. Not only that, with a smaller 100 105, I actually ran a 90 millimeter throttle body and a 102 slash 105 millimeter throttle body to find out and answer the following question. Hey Richard, can I just keep my stock 90 millimeter throttle body? Do I need to also upgrade to the bigger throttle body when I get this intake manifold? All those questions will be answered right now. Okay, guys, before we get going, we need to take a look at our test motor because obviously the test motor affects the kind of gains that we get from any sort of modification or change that we make. This was a 427 LS7 short block, although it did have a piston upgrade on it. It had forged pistons. It was bored 4130. It had a set of Molly flat top pistons with 2cc valve reliefs. It had a set of Trick Flow 255 CNC ported LS3 heads that had been milled 50 thousandths. It had 1.7 uh, ratio shaft rockers from Brian Tooley Racing. Had a pretty good size camshaft in it. It was 618 lift, 247 to 70 on the exhaust side, 112 plus two. So good size camshaft. So the thing served to, you know, allow us to maximize the flow rate or tax the flow rate of all of these intake manifolds. So let's find out how all of the intake manifolds did. Put her on. Yeah, this is gonna be all the powers. The stock is where it's at. Man. You can't do any better than that. If you want weight reduction, you don't need to get rid of the manifold. Oh, I know. Sure. Aluminum heads, aluminum block, and a composite manifold. That's a really a pretty good combination. Wheel it in past all these. Hoses and wires and everything. Then I'm gonna hold the pressure sensor back here. It's giving me. Come on, James, I can't do everything. <laughs> oh, that's why I looked at this one. Oh, yeah, hooked it. It snapped into place. Boom. This is a lot easier just um, me using my camera, watching <laughs> somebody else do all the dyno work. I like, kind of like this. <laughs> Okay, very quickly, let's jump right in and find out how our 427 LS3 headed LS7 combo did. I went over the, the specs earlier, but let's take a look and see what happens when we ran this combination with the factory LS3 intake manifold and 90 millimeter drive factory drive by wire throttle body. That intake manifold notoriously has always done very, very well in any of my testing. You could take a look at the videos I have up on my channel on the LS3 intake manifold. We ran all the EFI intake manifolds and all the carbureted intake manifolds and quite honestly, the factory LS3 intake manifold has always been very, very hard to beat. So let's see how it did on this combination with the big cam and stuff. This combination with the factory intake manifold produced a peak of 665 horsepower and just under 600 foot-pounds, 598, 599 foot-pounds of torque. So it did well. That's correct. 
What is it, vacuum line? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Where's the fill rails? Nice radius. Belt mouse. Hey, you don't go in there. <laughs> oh, this will be cool. After installing the injectors and fuel rail, we installed it on the dyno, got everything ready, installed the lid, then installed the factory throttle body, and she was ready to rock. Did we get everything? Yeah. There you go. Okay guys, before we go over the results of the factory LS3 intake manifold versus the Performance Science Designs XS intake manifold, please take a look at the other videos I have up. I have two on LS3 intake manifold tests where I tested just about everything that was available. Obviously this Performance Design intake manifold was not available at the time, but take a look at how hard it is to improve upon the factory LS3 intake manifold, and then they, these can put these results basically into perspective because it's very, very difficult to beat, and especially it's very difficult to beat with Without losing a ton of power down low which some of the short runner manifolds did but let's jump in and take a look run with the factory LS3 intake manifold and 90 millimeter factory drive-by-wire throttle body our combination brews 665 horsepower and 598 foot-pounds of torque and we're gonna jump right to the biggest version of the XS and then I'm gonna do another video comparing the different steps that we took because we actually tested a lot of different things on this performance XS intake manifold but here's what happened when we ran the performance designs intake manifold and here is our run right here there you go you can see Actually, fairly impressive power gains. The power output jumped from 665 horsepower to a peak of 691 horsepower. Peak torque was also up, up over 600 foot-pounds, which is pretty good. 611, 612 foot-pounds of torque. So good power gains. Most of the power gains came uh, from 4,400 RPM on up. There was a slight drop in torque, maybe down here at 3,200, a couple of foot-pounds, but nothing that you would probably notice, not compared to the gains that you get up top. So this is one instance, uh, I have to commend the guys from Performance Designs. First of all, it's <laughs> it's a good intake manifold. And it, the other thing that's cool about it is it gets gains, it also fits under the hood. But I was very impressed by the fact that they didn't resort to doing ultra short runners, making lots of power, you know, power 
power gains may be on the top, but all the while sacrificing low speed power. It looks like they did their homework and the intake manifold came out pretty well. But now let's take a look and see what happened when we ran. There were two different versions of the performance design intake manifold. There's a 105 and a 112. This one was the 112 with a larger throttle opening and the bigger 112 millimeter throttle body. As you saw in the previous video, we tried running the factory LS3 intake manifold with a bigger throttle body and it didn't do anything. So please go ahead and make comments on, oh, all the gain is from a bigger throttle body because that's not the case. So now let's take a look and see what happened when we ran the smaller 105 millimeter version of the performance design intake manifold. And I ran that both with a 90 millimeter and a 102 millimeter throttle body. So check it out. Okay, guys, we've taken a look at the testing with our uh, bigger 112 millimeter throttle opening version of the intake manifold. Now let's take a look at the smaller 105 millimeter version. Here we have it run first with a factory 90 millimeter throttle body because I get a lot of guys ask, hey, I've got a factory LS3. It's got the factory drive-by-wire throttle body. Can I use that and not have to step up to the bigger throttle body? Well, you guys get to decide because and this actually happened by accident, but we put first put the performance design intake manifold on and ran it with the factory throttle body before installing the proper 102 slash 105 millimeter throttle body. So, but the performance design intake manifold run with a factory 90 millimeter LS3 intake or LS3 drive-by-wire throttle body produced 679 to 680 horsepower, 679 and change, and right at 600 foot-pounds or so of torque. So it did very well, but you guys might be wondering, yeah, but what happens if we put the right size throttle body? Because that throttle body was too small. Let's take a look at that. You can see it did pick up power with the bigger throttle body. So we, we picked power up to 686 horsepower, which worked, you know, was a good gain. So I would think definitely worthwhile to step up to the bigger throttle body. I always like to match the throttle body opening um, to the throttle body size so that they're matched. You get, you know, smooth flow, you get a good transition. And then finally, we'll take a look. Here's what happened when we went to the bigger intake manifold. We stepped things up even further to 691 horsepower with the bigger opening and the bigger throttle body. This is obviously a good combination. It makes lots of power. We see gains with each one of those steps. So there you have it. The performance design XS intake manifold obviously did fairly well. Big gains from the factory intake manifold, which as you know, is no easy feat. I'm Richard Oldor. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.